As some of you may know, Argonians have been my favorite race for a long time, and it would be hard to find anyone who doesn't at least think that they're incredibly unique. Over time, as I've gone deeper and deeper into Elder Scrolls lore, I've actually kind of lost any certainty as to what my favorite race is, seeing as they're all so much cooler and more detailed than what is shown off directly in the games. That said, I do still have a soft spot for the mysterious lizard race, but when I saw this posted on Twitter the other day, I couldn't stop laughing. It said, When the Hiss created you to be a slave race and the Dunma used you as slaves for millennia, and you fail every attempt at expansion, even though the Dunma were recovering from two back-to-back -back crises, and you're only able to survive militarily because your province is a literal cesspool, but kids on Facebook think you're the best race ever because your slave masters, who are trees, told you about a national crisis before it happened. I knew that even though I loved the Argonians, and therefore must be some kid on Facebook, what this post was saying was pretty fair. Although I wanted to dig deeper and find out more, perhaps it was biased and was leaving out large feats of Argonian accomplishment that I had forgotten about. I wasn't sure, so I got researching, and in this video we'll explore whether or not Argonians have in fact been such a weak civilization throughout Elder Scrolls history. After we find our answer, I will actually go deeper into the lore, unveiling a theory that might very well suggest that there is more than meets the eye here. It involves the cryptic histories of Black Marsh, so get very excited for that. So, what we do here is go back, way back to the Morethic era to see what we can find out about Argonians. We know that species of Argonians, or at least ancestor Argonians, actually lived all around Tamriel in small tribal communities which were littered all over the place. It is said that this early on in the Morethic era, many of these groups didn't even have written language yet. We also don't know for sure how the Argonians even came to be. Much like their province, their origins are shrouded in mystery. Some say the Hist created them, however there is evidence to suggest many theories. In the Elder Scrolls novel, Lord of Souls, an Argonian receives a vision from a Hist tree, showing him that the Argonians were mindless lizards until they drank the Hist sap, which then supposedly gave them thought and sentience. Whether this is an accurate representation of what happened, no one knows for sure. There are also ancient cave paintings which depict figures far more tree-like than Argonian. Again, it is a mystery. More on the Hist later. Anyways, cut to the middle of the Morethic era and we have the first instance of Argonians being stepped on by another group. The Aldmer, who were the precursor race to the modern day elves you know and love, came on into Tamriel from the lost continent of Aldmeris and pushed all of the ancient Argonians away, sending them fleeing deep into Black Marsh where they were safe. Ah the so-called cesspool. It is here that the Argonians would find refuge for errors to come, as if you go far enough into the center of the province, it becomes inhospitable for the other races. It is no surprise that the Argonians would be driven back into their swampy homeland, as the Aldma were much more technologically and magically advanced, not to mention more organized. Move even later into the Morethic era and we find the Chimer, who are Dark Elf ancestors, settling in the land we know today as Morrowind. The Chimer are significant in this video because we know that Dark Elves kept Argonians as slaves. However, there is also some evidence to suggest that even the Chimer kept these reptilians as slaves centuries before the Dunma ever did. This was explained by an Argonian ghost encountered in Stone Falls in the Second Era in the year 582. This is lore from the Elder Scrolls Online, so if you're not too fussed on it, I don't blame you, especially considering that the Dark Elves and the Argonians don't seem to acknowledge the Chimer keeping slaves to have ever happened. However, if you do accept this as canon, which technically it is, or at least the ghost saying it's true is canon, it serves as another piece of information which suggests that, yet again, the Argonians have been dominated by another group. In the beginning of the First Era, which comes after the Morethic Era, the Argonians didn't leave their homeland very often, although it is said that certain individuals were still scattered all around Tamriel. Anyways, how did the Argonians fare in the First Era? Did they conquer? 
or were they conquered? Well, what was actually happening around the first era was a lot of piracy. It was a massive problem for the Elysian Empire, and Topple Bay tended to be where most of it went down. This bay is close to Black Marsh, and there was one infamous pirate who had the best hideout ever, the swamps of Black Marsh itself. This pirate's name was Red Bramin, and he was so successful that he attracted the attention of Empress Hestra. The Empress told the Imperial Navy to hunt him and destroy him to bring back his scaly head. I guess this is one impressive thing Argonians did, right? They had one of the best pirates around, although it's a drop in the ocean when compared to their race being defeated by others. So the Imperial Navy followed Bramin deep into Black Marsh, further than they had ever been before. They are lucky they did not die, and even luckier that they captured Bramin, bringing his head back to the Empress as she commanded. This was not a quick process. It involved many intrusions into Black Marsh, and each one was met with more and more resistance from the Argonians. The native Argonians saw the Imperials come in, bringing with them pillaging and slavery as they pushed deeper and deeper into Argonian territory, attempting to settle parts of Black Marsh along the pirate routes. You can imagine what their first impressions of the Imperials would have been as a result. The Empire continued to use these pirate routes, and this continually frustrated the Argonians, making them resentful towards the races of men. However, once the pirate threat was destroyed, the First Empire was relatively happy to leave Black Marsh to the native Argonians, also leaving a foul taste in their mouths. It is important to realize that the First Empire's influence was also waning at the time, and the Argonians' resistance had been growing, decreasing exploration of their province. This also contributed to why the Empire was happy to leave Black Marsh alone. So here again we see the Argonians suffering at the hands of another race, putting up a fight but doing far less damage than the invaders. One part where Argonians gain some credit is for their contribution to the sinking of Thras and the defeating of the Slowed in 2260. However, this involved Argonians aiding the Empire by joining naval forces with the rest of Tamriel to create the All Flags Navy, defeating a common enemy. As stated, however, the Argonians didn't really show their dominance over anyone else. They simply assisted in a massive joint effort to take down the Slowed. The Slowed were hated by all races of Tamriel as they created the Thracian Plague, a disease which caused much turmoil in the continent for most of the 2200s of the First Era. So, do the Argonians survive the rest of the First Era without being conquered? The answer is no. As the Second Empire came to prominence, the Riemann dynasty of emperors became very interested in claiming Black Marsh and using it as a beneficial province of the Empire. In the year 2811, the Battle of Argonia occurred, in which Cyrodiil fought against Black Marsh, defeating their final part of their entire army. This was one battle in a collective war known as the Blackwater War. The Argonians retreated to Hellstrom, a place located in the center of the province, untouchable by man. The following year, Black Marsh was formally merged into the Cyrodiilic Empire, although much of Black Marsh lay entirely outside of Imperial control. As time went by, Riemann II gained control of the Ruby Throne, and in the year 2830 he decided to conquer Black Marsh once and for all. Due to the terrain of Black Marsh, the odds weren't in his favor, and it is said he lost as many men to the swamps as he did to the Argonian defenders. The Empire defeated the Argonians here again, taking control of the northern and eastern sections of the province. Again, there was only so much that was livable to the races of men. In the year 2837, the territory the Empire took became known as the Imperial Province of Black Marsh. It then became a prison state where some of the Empire's worst criminals were kept. Again, we see the Argonians being defeated. It's hard not to feel sorry for this fascinating race. Luckily for them, the Argonians gained a short break from the violence after the assassination of Riemann III and the crumbling of the Riemann dynasty. The beginning of the Second Era was declared, and the Argonians regained control of their lands again, using force to be a self-ruling province like they once were. Sadly for our scaly friends, the peace hardly lasted, and the Dunma actually began to gain a keen interest 
interest in the Argonians. They saw Black Marsh as a land filled with potential slaves, and so the Dark Elves turned offensive, going to the northern parts of Argonia and enslaving the inhabitants. Entire tribes were dragged away in chains back to Morrowind, and the Dunma Great House dress came to fruition, directing a massive slave raid on the northeastern Black Marsh city of Thorn. This became the main source for slaves in Morrowind. The Argonians tried to fight off the Dunma, but for the majority of the time they ended up in chains. Argonian slaves became widespread in Morrowind, and Black Marsh was exploited for a very long time. In the year 560 of the Second Era, the Nahartan flu went down and spread through Tamriel rapidly, killing thousands and thousands. It is said that the Argonians were immune to the disease, and speculated that they even carried it. The other races believed that an Argonian shaman manipulated the histories in order to enact revenge against those who had opposed the lizard race. Thankfully for the Argonians, this disease helped them keep a grip on their province for the next 40 years, as many were too afraid to go near it. It was said that even Tiber Septum thought twice before conquering Black Marsh, which we'll get onto shortly. So a disease came through and the Argonians were blamed, but this isn't exactly something the race can take credit for, is it? Even if one rogue shaman was in fact responsible. It seems like things for the Argonians were getting worse and worse, until we come to the events of the Elder Scrolls Online, where certain events led to the creation of the Ebonheart Pact, an alliance between the Nords, the Dunmar, and the Argonians. This saw slavery outlawed by most of the Dunma groups, and the Argonians were free from tyranny for a short while again. The event that caused the Argonians to be recognized and respected, even if it was temporary, was when a female Argonian slave received a vision from the Hist of the Nords and Dunma being killed by the Akaviri invasion. The girl escaped the dress plantation where she was being kept, and eventually ended up killing her slave master and taking control of troops by way of Jewel. She then rallied Argonian troops and came to the aid of the Dunma and the Nords, saving the day. Here is one area where the Argonians can claim some credit for showing their dominance. However, like any other times the Argonians have proven themselves formidable, it's just so outweighed by the times they've been beaten. And while the event did have a macro scale impact, it was kind of a micro scale event. As I mentioned, Tiber Septum then also conquered Black Marsh. It's unknown when the Ebonheart Pact came to an end, but we do know that it was wiped from existence by the time of the Tiber Wars, which started around the year 854 or 850. Slavery had also made a comeback at this time too, and again the Argonians found themselves at the bottom of the food chain. Tiber Septum eventually conquered all of Tamriel by using the Numidium, pulling it into one big empire. Black Marsh itself was not successfully invaded due to the terrain, however skirmishes did happen on the borders and northern areas, with the empire taking control of them once again, turning it into a kind of prison state. This marked the beginning of the Third Era, and the empire kept their most dangerous prison prisoners in Black Marsh and continued to hold defenses along the coast. The heart of Argonia, however, remained controlled by the Argonians entirely, as Imperial forces simply could not take control in such a swampy, dangerous environment. One of the many things that sucks for men there is the flesh flies. Yes, flies that literally swarm on you and eat your flesh. Because of threats like this, Tiber Septum didn't even bother with the deeper central parts of the province. Black Marsh stayed like this for most of the Third Era. Imperial governors controlled the coastal cities and received guidance and advice from native Argonians known as Archines. In return, the Archines got to control the rural areas that made up most of Argonia, the places where the Imperials couldn't go, where very likely Imperial rule was wasn't even recognized. The slave trade also continued, with slavery actually made legal for Morrowind under the treaty they signed when they joined the Septum dynasty. Sadly for Argonians, many of the Archines actually sold out and helped the Dunma take slaves from their marshy homeland. It wasn't until the time of the Imperial Simulacrum in the year 396 of the Third Era where the Argonians decided to go on the offensive. Slaves located in the lands of House Dress in Morrowind decided to rebel. Bell, fighting back against their Dark Elf overlords. I almost feel bad telling the truth here, but again, the Argonians lost, and the revolt turned into a full-scale war. It was Morrowind versus Black Marsh in an event known as the Arnesian War. Black Marsh was defeated, and Morrowind took a significant amount of their territory and a bunch of new slaves. And remember that famous Dunma painter from Oblivion who lives in Chadenhall? His father was actually a participant in the war. Anyways, things get better for 
the Argonians again for some time when King Helseth abolishes slavery in Morrowind. This improves the relations between Black Marsh and Morrowind. However, the Argonians are still furious, and rightly so, and many attempt to reclaim their lands stolen during the Arnesian War. They're unsuccessful, and as you might have realized, the Argonians have been trodden on almost non-stop throughout history, never getting a big win for themselves. Now is the one exception so far. Introducing the Oblivion Crisis of the Year 433. Mehrunes Dagon invaded Tamriel and attempted to bring destruction to all of its inhabitants. Oblivion gates opened up all around Tamriel, and the Empire's hold over the continent started crumbling as a result. Here's where things get interesting. The histories actually foresaw this happening, and used their special link with the Argonians to communicate with them, calling the majority of them back to defend Black Marsh against the coming invasion. The histories then used their power to out the Argonians, making them superhuman or super lizard. They were stronger, more agile, sturdier against damage, and overall far more powerful than normal. They were fearless as a result, and when the Oblivion Gates opened in Black Marsh, the Argonians actually took the offense, charging at the Daedra, cutting them down, and actually pouring inside the Oblivion Gates. They were so vicious that they actually went into an Oblivion Realm to send a message and slay the invaders, and they succeeded. The Daedra were forced to retreat to stop their realm from being overrun, and the Argonians finally won. A massive accomplishment and no small feat. They emerged more nationalistic than ever before, and compared to the other races who Dagon attacked, the Argonians fared better and were more united than them all. This event is extremely important because it lends itself to my interesting theory about the Hist. The Argonians definitely deserve credit for this, however do remember it wasn't exactly them who did it, but rather the Hist who helped them. Without the Hist, I'm not so sure if the Argonians could have executed it as well. I'll give you my Hist theory after we go over the fourth era quickly, the final part of history that shows how Argonians have performed militarily. So, with the Oblivion Crisis finally over and the Empire losing its grip on all of Tamriel, many provinces started to secede from the Empire, and Black Marsh was one of them. Five years into the fourth era, Red Mountain erupts, with toxic ash and smoke covering heaps of Morrowind. Vardenvel almost couldn't be lived in at all, and the mountain continued to erupt, and more and more areas of land were poisoned over the coming years. The Argonians, feeling more powerful than ever before, decided to attack attack the Dark Elves. They now want to do the invading and get them back for centuries upon centuries of mistreatment. It is suggested that the Thalmor encouraged the Argonians to do this, which wouldn't surprise me. However, if their plan was to then gain control over or gain an alliance with Black Marsh, they failed. The Argonians were too successful and kept the Empire and Morrowind from reclaiming their new areas as well. So the Argonian invasion of Morrowind happens and it's pretty successful. The Argonians sack Mournhold, the capital city of Morrowind and take over vast amounts of southern territory. Our reptilian friends did such a good job they made it all the way to Red Mountain itself, but then they were fought off by House Redoran, who succeeded in preventing them from conquering the rest of Morrowind. This is kind of what the quote from the start was saying. You see, while the Argonians were very successful and showed off their strength, the Dunmer were suffering from two back-to-back -back crises, the Oblivion Crisis and the eruption of Red Mountain, and they still managed to stop the Argonians from taking all their land. It is said that even in the time of Skyrim, the Argonians hold southern Morrowind, and patrols of the lizards are out in force. There's also the whole Umbriel crisis, but that was solved through the efforts of an Argonian, as well as a Breton, a Dunmer, and an Imperial, and a cast of other characters. Anyways, so through all this lore, we can discover that the Argonians have in fact been pushed around for their existence, and that almost all their attempts to fight back failed. When they won, it was because the Hist helped them, or because their enemies were facing multiple problems, or they ran away deep into their swamplands where no one could touch them. I love Argonians a lot, but I can't deny these facts. But now for the interesting theory involving the Hist. You see, when I heard about the Hist giving the Argonian fighters superhuman-like qualities to defeat a Daedric invasion, I was very impressed. This was an enemy that the other races of Tamriel really struggled against. Even races who had dominated the Argonians in the past. Obviously, the Argonians won this this time because of the Hist, but why did the Hist only help them then? Why didn't the Hist help the Argonians to avoid slavery, or help them battle away the Empire instead of subjecting their people to corruption?
oppression, pain, and suffering. Why didn't the Hist give the Argonians so much strength that they could take over all of Morrowind? It's hard to know for sure, as the Hist move in mysterious ways. For those who don't know, the Hist are a species of massive sentient trees, which grow in the innermost swamps of Black Marsh. They have a deep connection with the Argonians, and are said to be older and more ancient than all of the races of Man and Myrrh, some even believing them to be more ancient than the gods. The Argonians lick the leaking Hist sap for religious purposes, and their society involves much reverence of these trees. So again, why didn't the Hist help the Argonians even more? Well, one answer could be that perhaps their help is limited, and that they used all of their power to bring the Argonians back to Black Marsh and to give them the ability to fight off the Daedra. Another theory is one I am far more fond of, and that is that the Hist doesn't actually care about the well-being of the Argonian individuals, and only cares about the survival of themselves, and maybe the Argonians as a collective, but definitely not as individuals. You see, in Argonian lore, Argonians have a spirit which inhabits their body, or corpse. When an Argonian dies, it is said that their spirits and memories go back to the Hist, and their spirit is put into a new Argonian who is then hatched and lives a life of their own. In this way, Argonians can pretty much be used as tools. The Hist reside deep in the swamps of Black Marsh, where no other Tamrielic races can go, but I bet Daedra could go into these swamps. And isn't it interesting then that only when there's a threat that could actually go and harm the Hist, that the Hist come to the rescue of the Argonians, sending them a psychic message and giving them lots of strength. Really, this could very well just be the rescue of the Hist themselves. Argonians view all of life as one single moment, and seeing that they have a kind of reincarnation involving the Hist, then why should the Hist care about Argonian well-being on an individual level? They are very likely super long-term planners, especially if they are as ancient as we think. In this case, there's all kinds of reasons as to why they let the Argonians become in enslaved. Perhaps A, they didn't care at all because they knew it would never be able to affect themselves and come near the center of Black Marsh, or B, it makes the Argonians look non-threatening and weak, making the other races never worry about combining forces to mount a huge invasion against the province. There's always a chance that if all of Tamriel teamed up with their powerful mages and tacticians, that they could find a way to the center of Black Marsh and harm the Hist as a result. This happening is far less likely if the province is viewed as undesirable and its inhabitants as a meek slave race. Slavery of the borders is of course preferable to total conquest. Slavers attack and leave with their plunder, leaving behind the true power of the province, the Hist trees. Remember what I said about absorbing their memories and spirit? Well, it would also mean the Argonian body could serve as a vessel for the Hist, allowing them to learn more and more about Tamriel and any threats they may face. Look at it as a kind of overpowered collective learning ability. Politicians will run their mouth about important information as they walk through their cities if absolutely no one's around but a tired Argonian beggar sleeping on a filthy mat. But guess what? The Hist here through all. Another final advantage to their way of operating is that with the other races mistreating and causing the Argonians suffering, the lizards would grow more and more distrustful of outsiders and be more and more dependent on looking out for their own culture, a culture that is reliant on the Hist. This may be a theory, but if I had to pick any reason to explain why the Argonians have been kicked around forever and only were given strength when the Daedra arrived, it would definitely be this. So yes, from a militant perspective, the Argonians have been the weakest and the least successful on Tamriel, but it seems as if the Hist will keep them prosperous forever, as they are, at least as a collective, important to their all-powerful tree masters. Thank you so much for watching this lore video all the way through. I hope you found it very interesting and that you'll invade that like button. Social media links are in the description. As always, my name is Michael, and I can't wait to nerd out with you again very soon.